Good morning, everybody. So, Bambi, you're in the chat. How are you doing? I'm doing chocolate strawberries this morning. Caramel apples need to be packaged up that I did last night. And so the chocolate strawberries, I'm going to do some. Uh, yep. What's up, Tommy? Grayson, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm going back out again today. I got uh, some delicious strawberries. These things are gorgeous. Almost too big, actually. They mess me up when they get too big. So I'm going to do those. I'm going to practice a couple of Easter ones. I got uh, some strawberries that need to be packaged up into clamshells. So I got to do that. I got to put them in. I also have um, almost two dozen strawberry crunch cupcakes I'm going to decorate. And then I brought out a bunch of sprinkles and different things for Easter. I'm not really going to go. Um, the only reason why I'm doing it actually is just to advertise on Facebook. I'm not even really selling Easter anything. I have an event that I'm going to be doing. I'll be busy doing lemonade and snow cones and that kind of shit. I am going to come out in the morning, though, on Saturday and Sunday next week and sell strawberries. And they might have a couple of Easter ones mixed in there, but that's about it. So, yeah, package the apples, dip the strawberries, practice a couple Easter ones so I can advertise. And then my cupcakes are already baked. I freeze them. Um, Put it, I, I wrap them in saran wrap, then I put them in an um, airtight Tupperware. You can freeze cupcakes. So I'm going to put strawberry crunch toppings on those. And I better get started because I got to get going. What's going on with you guys? My allergies. I heard Carmela, I don't know if you're still in there, Tom, but I heard Carmela talking about. Her allergies were kicking in, and man, yesterday my allergies were bad. I feel a little bit better now. The pollen is just out of control. Yeah, and I don't, I don't take any medication. Like I don't do any allergy pills. That stuff is just, I can't do it. The Claritin, the Allertec. Benadryl, whatever they take, I can't do it. I just suffer through it. So I'm just going to unwrap these real quick, set them aside. I'm getting ready to go do a, um, a three-day event next weekend, the Easter weekend stick games for the Muckleshoot tribe, a huge gambling event. People come from Canada, from California, basically all over the country uh, to gamble on this uh, traditional Native American game. So I'll be selling uh, lemonade and pretzels and nachos and coffee and chocolate. Weather's going to suck, but yeah, same here, Grayson. It's just, just got to suffer through it, I guess. And it's weird because it just happens all of a sudden. I was fine when I woke up. I did a live yesterday morning uh, and I was, I was fine. And then I went to the post office and dropped off some envelopes and it smelled like cat litter for some reason in the post office. I don't know why they weren't open. It was just a little self-service thing. And at, it was it was at that moment that everything changed. I don't know what that cat litter smell was, but 
I got a headache. I got tired. My eyes started watering and it was just game over. I was, I actually fell asleep in my truck. And luckily it was one of my buddies that showed up at my stand. Uh, I was sleeping when they came to buy some strawberries yesterday. Yeah, it was bad. I couldn't, I couldn't get out of there fast enough. I don't know what, I don't know what the smell was. It was just horrible. And that's the, that's what made me sick. And, I, and uh, my roommate was, had some Glade, cinnamon Glade air freshener plugged in, in his room. And I'm allergic to that kind of stuff. So luckily he was nice enough to unplug it. I told him, I was like, dude, that's gotta go. But I'm gonna start, I don't know if you guys heard, I'm. This is going to be one of the last times I film in my kitchen over here because this is such a crappy little kitchen. I've got permission to create a little studio over at the commercial kitchen. So I'm going to go over there and um, really just kind of figure out how I can. I don't have I don't really have any equipment over there to do my chocolate and stuff. I just use it as basically a storage facility right now. So uh, but that's about to change But I want to build this. Uh, my, my little YouTube channel, and I don't know exactly how it's going to work yet. But eventually start making money off of it, not from viewership, but from sales, retail sales. I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but that's my goal. All right, these cupcakes are going to just get set aside, and I'll do the apples next. These bad boys here. I still have plenty of plain ones, but everybody loves these peanut ones. They're all gone, so I had to make new ones. And so I just have these little clamshells. I buy them in a box by the thousand. My goal, my theory is um, do you have an account on TikTok? Uh, no, I do not. I don't I don't have a TikTok account and I don't know, maybe I will. You know, that's one thing that uh, these things just fit in here like this. Got a little, just like in the store. So I sell them like that. Um, one of the reasons, you know, I'm gonna get over to the commercial kitchen and so it's just a lot, you know, it's all about presentation. So there's people that do the chocolate strawberries uh, that are getting, you know, well over a hundred thousand views per short, um, and they're not doing anything that I can't do, other than they're you know they've got the the video part of it down. So uh, that's what I'm going to work on because I already have the products. It's just a matter of putting together the presentation and the business. You know, it's already it's just ready to ready to explode. In fact, uh, the last time I was at my commercial kitchen, the head chef. Uh, wants to put me on the, um, she's got a ca local cable channel, channel 12 here in Washington, Pierce County, coming in the kitchen to showcase like uh, local uh, um, business owner and what they do. So she wants me to uh, make my caramel apples while they film me and put it on this little show they're going to do on channel 12. So I told her I would think about it. I don't really know if I want to I don't know if I want to do that or not, but uh, it it I guess it would be kind of good exposure for my business. So, see. And, and I have a website that I'm working on. And I want to figure out how to be able to ship these apples, just a little bit of cold packing. My strawberries, I can't ship. But these apples, uh, other people do it on Etsy and stuff like that, Amazon. So. Just a sprinkle one here. But yeah, once I get over to the to that kitchen, uh, I'll set up a lot a lot better uh, camera angle. So it'll be a lot more visually pleasing to the audience. Because I know this kind of sucks right now, but one one of my other missions that I always talk about for me personally on YouTube. Uh, yeah, 
Exactly. Yeah, it's a website where people can buy them. Um, I don't have it launched yet. I went to GoDaddy. So I, I think I need a little help with it. It's pretty, pretty simple, but I'm just so, I'm so busy that it's hard for me to even find time to do anything. But I'm getting there. I will get it built. This apple is too big for the clam shell. So I have, uh, hopefully I have some more. I have apple boxes that I put them in if they're too big. Uh, Osada Treats is the name of it. This is the name of my business, O-S-A-D-A -A, Treats. One of the problems that I, I found why I, I say I need help is that uh, some, you know, the domain, I try to type in Osada Treats in the search bar and it doesn't come up. So I don't understand how to, I have to configure the web address correctly. I'm an idiot when it comes to that kind of stuff. So. But my business right now, you know, I've done, um, I've sold over 100,000 chocolate strawberries in the last three years. Um, and it's all because of Facebook and because of the Muckleshoot tribe that owned the Muckleshoot uh, uh, Indian Casino here in Washington. It's the largest casino in the state. <clears throat> and I'm friends with all of the, there's 3,000 members and I'm friends with most of them. And they're my, they're my clients, they're my customers. So um, they hire me. It's funny because I used to be a dice dealer and uh, a pie gal dealer. You know, you know, you know the game craps in the casino. Uh, you know, I was the guy that was craps eleven, any seven, horns high, glow Joe, better men, better up, better men, that type of shit. I worked it and did that for a few years. I was also a boss at the casino there, where I wore a suit and tie and. Had my own parking spot and I could sign my name for any of the five restaurants for free. Uh, went to all the board meetings upstairs and rubbed elbows with the big wigs. I was a, um, they don't have the game anymore, but Kino, you know, the game Kino, I was a shift manager uh, in that. And for the, I did that for three years and then I, I quit because I got bored. What up, thing dude? Uh, how you doing? Thank you. Yeah, I was just saying that this can be the one of the last times I film over here in my my crappy little kitchen. I'm gonna build a little studio over at the um, the gourmet niche is what it's called. My little commercial kitchen. But yeah, I was a uh, I was a uh, a boss and a dice dealer at the casino and love uh, love Kino. Yeah, Kino was a good game. You know, the funny story about that. So when I first started, I worked in, at a bingo hall uh, for about eight years in a game called Speed Bingo. And I got fired from that because they started drug testing and I was smoking weed. And I refused to quit. So they they decided to fire me, which was bullshit. But, um, and I was making good money doing that. I did that. I dropped out of college and started doing that game because I knew somebody that was working in it. And uh, I was a little gambler back then. And I, I was making about six, seven thousand dollars a month doing that at uh, 19 years old, you know, back in the early 90s. So I thought it was hot shit. Then I got fired from that. And then I went to go work in a casino. And I, I became a Kino runner where you just wear a pink shirt and uh, uh, walk around yelling Kino, Kino. And you get people to buy Kino tickets. Well, the very first day that I was there, uh, when I started, uh, the guy who ran the poker room uh, knew me from the speed bingo game that I used to work at, at the bingo hall. He's like, man, you should have you told me you were coming here. I would have got you a job in the poker room. I was like, shit, I didn't know. Otherwise, I would have. Uh, so he, he's like, I, I got you. He's like, I got a job for you. Um, Am I losing my mind? What the hell did I do with the other app? I am. I must have already baked them up. I did. 
okay um he's like i got i'll hold it because you have to wait 90 days before you can transfer department so i had to be a keno runner for 90 days and then i could be, go to the poker room where it's a lot more money a lot more fun i'm working with a bunch of old ladies in the keno i'm like hell yeah i could not wait to get out of there 90 days i'm talking about poker 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 well on day 89 the head of the Kino department, the man or the president, the man, you know, head of the department says, uh, she's like, I have a job opportunity, job opportunity for you. She's like, I'm going to, you can skip supervisor. I'm going to promote you straight to shift manager, which is directly under her. And that's where you're wearing a suit and tie, sign in for your name for all the, to eat in all the restaurants for free. I got my own parking spot. They put me on salary. Uh, this, that, and the other. I thought I was hot shit. And, but I'll tell you what, the guy, Dennis, who held that job for me, he was fucking pissed. I went to him. I was like, Dennis, I have this opportunity. What do you think? He goes, do what you got to do, kid. And I was like, okay. And I asked my grandma about it. I talked to my family about it. And I made that decision. Oh, fuck. He never talked to me again after that. But so I did that for three years. And I don't really, I don't really regret anything in life, uh, you know, because fuck, if I would have went to the poker room, who knows where my life, I probably wouldn't be doing this now, but, uh, Kino was super boring. I really didn't like it. Um, what I wanted to do was be the casino manager. I wanted to take over the whole casino and I had meetings with the heads of the casino and they're like, there's no way you're going to do that unless you step down and go to table games. And I argued with them about it. I was like, fuck that. I, I can deal these games better than anybody in this casino. I know these games better than anybody. That's what I was telling them. They're like, we don't care. You want to work your way up? They go, we'll put you back in a suit in a year if you step down and become a dealer. I said, okay. So I gave up Kino. Started, I became a dice dealer. And then I started hanging out with all the dealers and started drinking every night and this, that, and the other and partying after work and it just the becoming the casino manager just that just was never going to happen not working with those fucking clowns so uh i ended up getting fired from the casino after three years of dealing because my attendance was so bad so uh and then i and then i went off and did some other did some other stuff but uh, full circle back three years ago I started this chocolate business um, and now that casino that fired me, uh, they hire me to come back inside the casino to do, you know, they, they hired me to do a chocolate fountain set up for them. Um, and this is so funny because it, it's for the employee appreciation party. They hired me to do, uh, you know, and they paid me a couple thousand dollars to do an employee appreciation party, which I just think is so funny because they fired me for shitty attendance. Regret nothing. Uh, you tried something else and you have walked in shoes and and, you, and would have just walked in his shoes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yep. You know, I don't I don't regret anything to do. I mean, there's a couple things that I regret, but it doesn't have anything to do with that. But no, this business now it's off and running. And uh, not only did I, they just, in fact, this, uh, the casino just hired me, uh, to do another private party coming up. I don't know all the details about it yet, but it's for these apples. So I've done, uh, since I started my apples, I've done about a thousand of them, give or take. And my goal is to get to 10,000, uh, as fast as possible. Because my my theory is that if you want to be a master at something, you got to do it ten thousand times. So I've done a uh, hundred thousand strawberries, so I guess I could consider myself a master at those. These are the strawberries we're gonna do. These things are just beautiful. Chocolate 
You guys got any plans for the day? I'm going out and selling strawberries and caramel apples. That's what I've been doing the last two days. And then I got this big gambling event coming up next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Easter weekend stick games where I'll be doing my lemonade and nachos and pretzels and coffee and energy drink and chocolate strawberries, whatever else I think of. I'm going to do instant soup. Yeah, aren't these beautiful? So these strawberries come from Mexico. And all of your guys' strawberries come from Plant City, Florida. But Slim was reading about uh, on his container yesterday. Both him and Troc have some beautiful strawberries going on right now. And they come from Plant City, Florida, which on that note, I've just been in contact with those guys recently. There's a Plant City, Florida is the strawberry capital of the world. And so you know, of course, I have to be involved with that. They have the largest strawberry festival in the world every year, and it's coming up, and it's um, a six-day event where last year, I mean, it just shuts the whole city down. Leonard Skinner was there. There's all these huge bands. I think Neil Young was there last year. Uh, here, I'll move this over here so you guys can see. So anyway, I emailed them because they have, they do chocolate strawberries on a stick, which I'm not a fan of, but I don't have any kebabs. It's basically, it's basically a, a thick, you know, shish, wooden shish kebab about that long, about 12 inches long. And they'll put the strawberries, they'll stack them like this, about four or five deep on a kebab and then try to dip that in chocolate and it just it doesn't look great but it's easy to walk around i guess you can put it in a french fry boat and um you know there, I, I know a guy that sells them like that up here and he does pretty good he actually makes more money than i do um, at the events with strawberries because he does it that way but yeah Definitely want to get over to the commercial kitchen, so it's a lot, a lot more visually appealing. This is not a very good setup right here at all, but it is what it is. Another one of my missions in life, besides making myself look good on YouTube, is to motivate. I don't always say this: motivate people that've been in my situation where they don't have a pot to piss in, no job, no money, no mom or dad, no nothing and the outlook is bleak and you don't know what you're gonna do. And then that's when I found chocolate three years ago. And so I, I wanna show people that are kind of in that, cause I know there's a lot of people that are in my age bracket that are just like, fuck, they don't know what to do. It's kind of like, it's hard to find a job. The jobs there are, and it's, it's hard to find a good job, I should say, you know, nobody wants to go work. You know, I just had a conversation with the general manager at Burger King the other day and she goes i would you know love to have uh um have you as a manager here and i said well you know <clears throat> to be honest i do have a little bit of free time sometimes you know if, if the price was right you know i'd come in and and clean house she says we start our managers out at 19 dollars and something cents an hour and i mean i just i didn't want to be rude so i just I mean, are you fucking kidding me? $19 an hour? It's just, it's fucking disgusting. And it's so expensive to live over here. That, you know, it's, I don't, I don't just, I don't have no answers for this, for, for this broken place, but yeah. I definitely would not waste my time being a manager for $19 an hour. Yeah, no, exactly. And, you know, if it was a... Uh... Hey, Holler Neck, how are you? Thank you. 
Yeah, it's not always about the money. I'll tell you, the only I always tell myself I'm never going to work for anybody again. But there's one guy that I do work for, Bob. It's a, a fantasy casino company, Fantasy 21, or 21 for Fun is the name of it. And the only reason why I work for him when he calls me when I'm not busy is because I love him so much and his wife. It's just they're great people. It's not about the money. It's just about helping him out because when I can, because he helped me out when I needed it. And but man, some of these places, the they're, they're, they're work environments are so toxic. The casino business, you want to talk about toxic work environment. I love what I do. I'm never going to stop doing what I do. I'm going to, it's going to change a little bit. It's going to be chocolate. It's going to be concessions, lemonade, snow cones, that type of stuff. But man, do I have, even though I don't, you know, I'm not really making a lot of money right now, the payoff of just the peace of mind and knowing that everything's going to be okay now. Thanks, Holler Neck. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the goal, you know, America first. You know, I'm surrounded by small businesses of people that have nothing to do with American culture. And what I've learned about being on the side of the road for three years, you know, I call it guerrilla vending, where I set my tent up on the side of the road. And, you know, 90, 95% of my customers are the Muckleshoot tribe. But I now I'm getting more and more people from the public. I can tell you who does not support my business. All of the local uh, small business owners that own the uh, the noodle shops, the teriyaki shops, the nail salons, um, the little convenience stores, you will never see them at my stand buying anything. They don't support American small business. They keep it in their circle. And it, that just, it is what it is. <clears throat> and you're talking to a guy whose last name is Osada, which is Japanese. So, uh, and my dad was born uh, January 13th, 1945 in a Japanese internment camp, which is now the Puyallup Fair. Well, it was the Puyallup Fair even back then. But when they decided to round all those guys up, they turned it into an internment camp. So it's not, you know, I have a, a pretty deep seated knowledge about Asian culture and stuff like that. And it's so it's, it's, this is not a, a prejudice thing or anything. It's just, it's just the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Theme do. It is all about working for who I want work for. And it's all about surrounding my, it's, it's about, I don't even have to sell to who I don't want to sell to, you know, it's, um, I don't go out of my way. Like, for example, on you, you know, you see how I conduct myself on YouTube. I don't ever insert myself to where now I'll insert myself in your phone with 10,000 photoshops. But I will, you'll never hear me like, oh man, I wish, you know, I, you'll never even hear me like drop a hint. Oh man, I wish people would buy my, I don't even, I don't even offer people to buy my chocolate. It's not, that's not who I am or what I'm trying to do. There's a time and a place for everything. And, you know, that's why I go set my tent up and stuff like that. And once I have my website, when people choose to buy my chocolate, they can go to that. But I'm not the type of person. That's why I got out of real estate. I was a real estate agent for a while. And I'm not saying real estate agents are bad. And I was a car salesman for a while. I can't be that person. In Kentucky, there used to be a whole lot of, uh, sorry, that little heart makes it so hard to read this. Uh, there used to be a lot of, uh, little flea markets where people could set up and, and sell. But nowadays there is very few. Yeah. Yep. And the corporations are destroying everything. And now, you know, with the online thing, the, sh the stores are shutting down and, you know, it's just a huge agendas that are going on out there, but I'm all about supporting small business. The things that you can find at these markets, the vend where the vendors are at, the, the ones that I go to, I mean, you can't find that kind of stuff in the store. I have so many things that are just like handcrafted and, you know, 
that I trade or I just buy to support their business, you know? So I guess that, you know, I would rather preach to people about supporting small business in your local area than to try to get somebody to buy my chocolate from across the country, I guess. is That's a more effective, uh, for me, that's more important. Because where we're at, we have to support small business. And so I take note about, like I said, the people that don't support me. Because I have... Uh, I have businesses set up all across from me, a whole strip mall. I got a pawn shop, a coffee shop, a teriyaki shop, a Mexican restaurant, a subway. What else? A hair salon. And you know who supports me? It's just the, it's the people that, uh, some of the workers that work there, that live around there. It's just very interesting. But I, I, I will, you know, my, my business thing is I'm, I don't, I always take care of my customers, whether they come to just buy one apple. Cause I've been noticing that the last couple of days that I've been out, people must be broke. Um, Cause they're not buying uh, a ton of stuff. Some people I've had like probably 10 people come by just to buy one caramel apple, but you know, I truly appreciate that. And I take care of those guys and I let them know it. And so that's what's important to me in this business. It's just uh, being real. Because we ain't, we're not here forever. You know, we're pretty much, you know, we're yesterday's news. It's the younger generation that we're going to have to worry about. So anyway, I don't know where I'm I'm headed with this, but I, I just know that this is it right here, the strawberry, American made. Put these on my rack. Um, Second here. All right, need some more chocolate. But yeah, you know, and I'm not I'm not complaining about business support or anything like that. It's just I just I was just making a point about that. But I get tons of support. I have no complaints whatsoever. All I have to do is show up. I've worked hard enough over the last three years where this business pretty much runs itself. Uh, as long as I put in the work, people are gonna come out. So, and I have a feeling that today is gonna be better than the last few days put together. So now I'll do a few, few peanuts real quick. If you guys ever do strawberries, you gotta have more chocolate than you need. If you get down to the bottom, they're gonna start looking ugly. And even this chocolate right here, it's got, kind of looks like it's got a little bit of bumps in it. I don't know if you can see, I'm really particular. That's only because I forgot to um, melt my chocolate last night. I threw it in this morning, so it didn't quite get all the way melted, but it's all good. It's all gonna harden back up anyway. Oh yeah, the weather's, it's gonna be hot this year, I think, I, pretty much probably around the country. Definitely over here, it's gonna be above, above average. And it's funny because when I first started this business in 2021, the stress level that I would have when it started getting, because all I did was chocolate. And so trying to sell chocolate strawberries in July and August was an absolute nightmare. I mean, 
I would have coolers with ice, but ice, water, and chocolate don't mix. Um, yeah, thanks, all our net. So it was a nightmare. But so now, you know, that I do snow cones and lemonade, it just changed my entire business. Yeah, these are these are good. These these are really good. So when I first started doing the peanut ones, I was buying a little tiny jar of uh, they were called the ice cream topping nuts. I'm sure you guys have seen those. You know where you can buy like the the caramel and the syrup for the ice creams and the cones. And it was like it started out at two something, and then it, they went up to like three twenty nine a jar. And so, and I was only able to get not even two dozen peanuts, two dozen strawberries rolled from one of those containers. I'm like, damn, that's expensive. Luckily, and, they, and then they just disappeared all together. I couldn't find them anymore. And they were actually like ground up macadamia, uh, Brazil nuts and walnuts. It, was, it wasn't just peanuts. So I can't find them anymore. Luckily, because now I do it myself. I use my food processor. I get uh, dry roasted, unsalted peanuts, and I do it myself. Yeah, come on over, theme dude. Oh, I, I need to send you some more. I don't know why I haven't. I've been, I've, I've just been so busy. I, I, I will send you some. You like the peanut one? I can't send you the strawberries, but uh, I can send you pretzels uh, with peanuts. You know, I don't know if you like the apples or not. I could try to send you. Uh, I need to learn. I need to figure out the whole cold packing for the apple. Yeah, you can smell these peanuts. They're, they just smell amazing. Uh, the thing is, is that a lot of people got nut allergies these days. It's crazy. These little. Uh, you know, gluten-free uh, people that walk around now. It's amazing how many times I get asked for like uh, sugar-free and gluten-free and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, guys, you know, I, I'm not here for uh, to try to reinvent the wheel of chocolate, you know? The foundation of chocolate is sugar and, you know, Okay, theme dude, yep, I got you. But these are, you know, you guys are definitely missing out of like the bread and butter, like the heart of my business are these strawberries. There is no substitute. You know, it's what, this is what I'm the master of is the chocolate strawberry. Over 100,000 dipped in three years. Went from 198 people on Facebook to well over 5,000 and, uh, it, it, my business is just on a, it's on a, it's just shooting upwards. And it's because of these bad boys right here. It's the strawberry. And the apples are coming right along next. I don't know if you guys seen my, um, I made a caramel apple. They're all, they're already all sold out. It was um, the bacon maple bar caramel apple. We call them maple bars over here, a maple bar donut. They call them um, Long John's or Bismarck's or cream sticks over there on the East Coast, I think, but it's basically the same thing, it's that, it's that maple. So I dipped the apple in caramel and then I pasted it in that maple and rolled it in baking bit. And that's the one that the chef is like, okay, I wanna put you on the channel 12 uh, cable show. So, oh, you seen those holler neck? Yeah. So those, those, are, those are really good. I had a, I already threw it away. Last night we made a walking caramel apple where you take an apple and you just wedge it into 16 slices and you put it in a french fry boat and then you pour caramel over it. You pour peanuts or white chocolate, milk chocolate, whatever you want, and then eat it with a fork. Pretty good. Okay. I think I did a few too many and I was started talking. All right, holler next. I started talking and I did too many milk chocolate ones, but that's okay. A few more peanuts.
This is uh, Oreo cookie with a chocolate cream in the middle instead of that white cream. You guys can see this or not. So yeah, I'm gonna do these and then I gotta do the cupcakes. Once I get down to about 10 strawberries left, I'll do a few Easter ones for you guys. See how those go. Decorate the cupcakes. Then I'll go out and sell today. And then I'm gonna clean up and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Well, Wednesday, I'm gonna have to go set my tent up for the event, but tomorrow and Tuesday, we'll definitely be prepping for this next event coming up. So I've got two uh, 45 cup turbo coffee makers I'm gonna bring out. I've got two Carnival King uh, cheese melters be bringing out my microwave. I'll be bringing out a soup kettle for chili. And then I'll, I'll be doing my lemonade. So I got to bring out all my stuff for my lemonade. It's not going to be warm enough for snow cones. So no snow cones. Uh, but I'll be doing my Lotus energy drinks. So that takes a little bit of uh prep work to get that going. I'm so glad I got that truck now. This is a game changer. Okay. A couple more. Then I'll switch over to white chocolate. Guys, look at the apples real quick and some cupcakes. Switch over to white chocolate real quick. Bear with me, guys. I gotta wash my soup ladle. That's it's in the milk chocolate. I gotta wash it so I can use it for my white chocolate. It's only got one. Today's my son's birthday. I guess I better let him tell him happy birthday. Yeah, Matt, I don't know if you're still listening, seeing you all send, uh, I got to send uh, Vito some more treats too. All right, all right. White chocolate. Let's do. I'll do one. 
You do one with sprinkles just because part sprinkles. Just something to put on my Facebook page with some of the other ones. I'm gonna do some plain white ones real quick and let those dry so I can use those for, I don't know, some type of Easter. Since it's Easter, let's try to do a couple of Easter colors. All that for one berry. There's the blue and the green. Actually, that's Seahawk colors. This is Seahawk country over here. we got
helps if you get this stuff all loose. So you don't get a lot of clumps when you roll it. Oh, you guys can see that. I forgot to empty out my chocolate last night, so half of the chocolate that's in here is not even melted. So there's a lot less chocolate in that thing than it looks that I can use. I'll put some more in here shortly. And what I mean by that is you can, and that's whatever, you know, you just leave your chocolate in there and then you remelt it. But I already have my chocolate melted. So I just poured my melted chocolate on top of my unmelted chocolate because it would take another, <clears throat> take another five minutes or 10 minutes to get that chocolate melted. I just have one drop in there. Oh, shoot. When that happens, just set it on the side and move along. I just had one uh, come off the toothpicks and drop in the chocolate. It happens from time to time. It'll, it'll happen more uh, once your chocolate starts getting, uh, the temperature starts lowering on it and it becomes thicker. It's time to remelt it again. So I just need a little bit more chocolate here. You guys will be able to see what I'm talking about, what I'm doing once I get over to the commercial kitchen. Oh, shoot. Got a little spillage going on there. Making a mess. Yeah, this is the homemade strawberry crunch, golden Oreo cookies, strawberry jello, butter. You melt the butter, you mix all mix it all up, bake it in the oven. 350 for seven minutes. And you can use this stuff on anything. And it smells just as good as it looks. This is uh, by far my number one bestseller, the strawberry crunch. It basically, uh, it changed my whole business when I said, because I wasn't doing these ones in the beginning. I was only doing milk chocolate and white chocolate. What's up, Todd Father? How you doing? Just making chocolate, getting ready to go sell it. Third day in a row here. And then I'm going to take a break and get ready for a big event coming up next weekend. It's a three-day Three-day event I'm doing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Pretty excited about. What you up to? You out driving? Man, these strawberries are just huge.
too big. I sell them by the dozen or, you know, give or take. When they're too big, it messes my numbers up. It's hard to fit. I can't fit 12 of them in there. I have to sell. I give them like 10. Down to the circus. Oh, that's cool. I've been to a circus forever. Dean Du said he got his other hat today. Nice. Yeah, I haven't been to a circus in years. I want to get into a, a state fair or something like that and try my hand at that. But I, and I thought that's what I wanted to do for this business because, you know, there's huge money. And um, I know a guy that made $96,000 selling snow cones with three locations at one state fair in 24 days. So you can make big money, but um, they're hard to get into. And it's a lot of work in a short amount of time. So my goal is to get into the youth sports parks around here for like football games, soccer games, softball, and get into their concession stand. I met a guy in Kansas City who does that. He became a millionaire from uh, youth sports parks. So he kind of is mentoring me. So that's my goal. Goal as far as that goes. Um, I'm going to try to work on that this year, along with um, everything else I got going on. Okay, let's do some Fruity Pebbles real quick. I'm going to just fill in the chocolate again. I'll set that aside. Got about two, four, six, eight, and about a dozen strawberries left to do. I think I'll just do some in white chocolate real quick. I'm running out of chocolate. There goes another one. Shit. One sec, guys. I need more chocolate. I will leave a couple of plain ones that I'll come back to. I'm going to do the cupcake turn in a second, but I'll try to do a little couple of Easter decorations when I'm done here. So I probably made about 12 dozen strawberries here. About 120 strawberries, maybe, give or take. Sounds about right. And I probably, how many did I do in 12 and 14? I sold about 20 dozen over the last two days, I'm guessing, give or take. Which is not a lot, but. 
two more, two more. These things are so big, it's just crazy. All right, all right, all right. There's always a different method to doing my cupcakes. How much you charge a dozen depends on depending on what type of cupcakes. Uh, these ones are going to be. Uh, ten dollars for a four pack and i would normally sell uh my strawberry crunch for 25 dollars a dozen so ten dollars a four pack or 25 for three i do have dozen containers that i use too but um, i'm using my four packs today if it's my huckleberry cupcake which is my best seller by far and i pay 85 dollars a gallon for my huckleberries i charge anywhere from 30 to 40 dollars a dozen for my cupcakes and I can't keep them in stock. So, um, these ones, I'm only doing these ones, uh, the strawberry crunch. Somebody bought, they actually ordered two dozen from me uh, last weekend at a basketball tournament. <clears throat> and I forgot that I even made them. So I decided to, I'll, I'll do some more. And so I got this right here, which is this stuff right here. I buy it frozen. It's called Frost and Pride. It's ready to whip icing and filling. And so if I need more, I'll get out my KitchenAid mix mixer and pour some of this in there and uh, turn it into this. Sometimes I use a tip when I'm decorating. These ones don't call for a tip. Uh, but what I do got to do, like I, what I was saying was, um, each cupcake has a different technique. The huckleberry ones I decorate inside the containers. These strawberry cupcake ones, uh, strawberry crunch, I gotta take them out of the container first because I dip them in the strawberry crunch. So, uh, Okay, I have an absolute mess going on here, but that's okay. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boom. Okay. Man, I need some more coffee. You guys got any favorite type of cupcakes? And I know, I know that sounds like a lot for cupcakes, and it is. And people don't have to buy them if they don't want to. You know, you can go to uh, the local grocery store and get them for much cheaper. And in fact, when I started making my, when I first started selling my cupcakes, I would call the grocery store up and have them make these for me, uniced, and then I would decorate and ice them, and I was charging just as much. I was, I think I was paying $7 a dozen for, uh, for uniced cupcakes. Now I make them myself um, and I can crank them out. I made 12 dozen in a couple hours the other day. And then I can freeze them ahead of time, which makes my life much easier. Um, you just kind of just, you kind of just live and learn and, and learn the process. I don't like to take orders for cupcakes because then you run into all kinds of problems. 
Are they going to show up on time? They, this is what they end up doing. Oh, can I get, um, well, this is what they do with my strawberries. <clears throat> can I order a, a tray of milk chocolate strawberries from you? Yeah, no problem. It's going to be, you know, X amount of dollars on this date, this time, boom. Okay. And then after that conversation, they'll come back with, oh, and can you color them with purple? Uh, purple swirls and uh, because it's the, the theme is like what no 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 there's no theme I you know you didn't mention anything about a theme first of all now you're gonna say a theme it just it's it never stops with the with the order so my business model is I make what I want to make and then I go out and sell it and if you want to buy it you can come out and buy it so I will never make any money taking orders from people. <clears throat> Everybody loves what I make. The things they don't love, I just I don't make. Some they don't love everything. I'll take that back. They don't love everything I make. They love everything that I sell. If it if they don't love it, I don't sell it. It's just you know that's just how it goes. And so there's a lot of uh, research and development. A lot of things that don't pan out that I thought. Like how for example last year I could have swore I was had I recreated the snow cone. I called it the sandbox. And just a long story, but nobody liked it. So lesson learned, you know, don't try to reinvent the snow cone. One sec, guys, I'm making a little coffee here. But my huckleberry cupcakes are by far my most popular. And uh, my ex, we've been split up for... <clears throat> Shit, how long have we been split for? 20 something years, probably 30 years, I don't know. Uh, probably 25 years. She's a professional baker. She's the one that taught me how to bake. And when the tribe hires me, like they hired me to do uh, a huge 1100 person party in December. They wanted 800 chocolate strawberries, 200 caramel apples, 350 hot cocoa bombs, which I all made myself. They also wanted 120 cupcakes, high-end cupcakes. And so I, I subcontracted the cupcakes out to Gila, my ex. And I paid her big money to do them, but um, her cupcakes, I mean, hers are like 10 times better than mine. If you take orders, you just got to ask more qualifying questions. See, that's the thing, though. Take care, holler net. Yeah, you know, it's just inevitably it just you know another thing todd father that i don't like is uh you know what i would like to do is i i want to figure out how to get uber eats involved because you know they can just come straight to the commercial kitchen and i can be making everything there and then the uber eats guy can just come pick it up i need to figure out exactly how to get involved in that so that's that's an option But there are very there are people that I will do special orders for. Like if you guys live if you lived in the area, you know it's your wife's birthday or something like that. And you you hit me up, I'd do it for you, no problem. Or Thine do or Tommy or, you know, there's I, my close friends over here. They know they they you know I'll hook them up. But just generally speaking, the public, man, it's a tough go. And you go on those Facebook uh, groups and you just hear the the stories. I'm like, yep, that's what I don't do. Now, the private parties for Muckleshoot, that's a different story because they pay me big money to do those. And they're pretty much no nonsense. Uber Eats might rip you off, though, I'm guessing. Yeah, you know, good point. I That's what I need to look into. You're probably right. You're probably right. Probably all the fees and everything. Probably I won't make no money. So I'll look into it, but yeah, you're probably right. I don't know if you guys uh, ever ice cupcakes, but I use uh, this tip for my Huckleberry cupcake. I'm not using a tip for these ones, but this one's already cut and you can slide your bag into this one and I could use the tip if I want to take it out and not use the tip. I can also, when I run out, just put a whole nother bag into this one. So just kind of a time saving tip for you. 
but what I'm doing with the technique for this one is you just glob some of this on there like that. Boom. And then you put it straight into the container. That one, I pressed down a little bit too hard, so it went a little wide on me. I always screw up the first one. So you really only need about that much icing on it. You don't need too much, actually. So yeah, nice and easy. And the strawberry crunch is just, that's amazing. It tastes so good. It's like those old school ice cream bars. So just like that, I'll stick a little label on it. <coughs> Excuse me. No. And 10 bucks out the door. Hey, GDM, uh, these are straw, uh, white cupcakes with strawberry crunch. It's got a vanilla whippy nice, and then my homemade strawberry crunch topping that goes on there. Just a quick little fancy little cupcake. I mean, non-fancy little cupcake. How you doing today, Gina? Yeah, practice makes perfect. You know, the first time I made my own cupcakes, I'm like, are you kidding me? Just getting the batter into the cupcake liner before you bake it. I was ready to flip everything upside down. I was like, this is not going to happen. I don't know. I just, I was like, there's no way. There's no way. And then I just kept at it. Now that I discovered that you can freeze them, if you, if you store them properly and you, and you don't allow them to get freezer burn, you know, it's just a lot easier to bake them ahead of time. And just pull them out of the freezer like I did this morning. And then you can be a lot more, uh, you have a lot more energy and a lot more creative ability when you haven't spent the whole day baking the cupcake. What's up, Bambi? How you doing? So I got two more of these to do. Oh, I didn't put enough. Uh, Icing on that one. That's that. I 
what else I got to do? Apples are packaged, cupcakes are done. Put this back in my refrigerator. Bear with me one second here. Oh yeah, I was gonna decorate a few of these with um let's see here, hold on. Hold the phone. Have a great day, GDM. Take care. All right. Now I'm just going to take a Q-tip and a little bit of white chocolate, and I'm just going to play. I'm going to pretend I'm an artist. And a little white chocolate on a strawberry, which is made out of fondant. If you guys can see that OK. Then this one, what I will do, what I'll attempt to do, I don't know if you guys can see this corner or not. I'm just going to try to do a little drizzle line here. Did not work very well, but we'll see how it does. That's not going to work. One second here. Let's see. This one by hand. I just do this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just do this strictly for advertising purposes. 
I don't think anybody could pay me enough to um, make make them like a whole bunch of strawberries that look like these because it's just so time consuming. But it looks good on Facebook and it attracts attention that, hey, I'm going to be out selling today. That's why I do it. I'm still listening. I'm making pancakes for my son. Right on, Todd Father. I posted a picture of uh, my granddaughter. I took her out, her and my daughter out to eat the other day. And the pancake was that we ordered was for her was bigger than my granddaughter, literally. It's one of those places that's known for like huge portions, you know. All right. So my chocolate is solidifying, so it's not nothing sticking. And that looks like good. Okay, I'm going to just abort mission on this, guys. Not feeling the whole Easter decorating thing right now. So. I'm going to package these up. I'll work on advertising for Easter on Monday. Technical difficulties getting us to up on. There we go. I have completely made a mess. Maybe I will try to advertise one little picture real quick here. That's the shot right there.
Okie dokie. So I advertise that on Facebook, show that I'm coming out today. I know I just got to package these up and that's about it. Put my phone back on YouTube here so I can see the chat. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's heavy. We'll get the cooler real quick. Most of these are going only going to have ten, not twelve of them today. That's too big. Huge. That eight, nine, this one's even can barely can even fit ten.
I almost need to buy a larger container for these strawberries. Three, six, nine, ten. All right, guys, that pretty much concludes the presentation. 
I mean, it's that simple. You make some apples, you make some strawberries, you make some cupcakes. It takes about an hour and a half and it takes about two hours to sell them. And that's it. And do it again the next day. And pretty soon you're, you're off and running. So thank you guys for hanging out. Um, thanks, Todd. Father, appreciate you. <clears throat> I'm going to, it's 8.36 here. I'll be set up by noon and hopefully be back home by about 3.30. Happy Sunday and uh, thanks for hanging out. See you guys next time.